morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to AI for Good, all year, always online. I'm Charlotte Kahn presenting AI for Good Perspectives. AI for Good is a year-round digital platform where AI innovators and problem owners and solvers learn, build, and connect to identify practical AI solutions to advance the UN SDGs. AI for Good Perspectives offer expert insights, global visions, and shared solutions from the AI for Good community. And today we bring you Sulab Soral, who leads the Deloitte AI Institute, to discuss an amazing project which uh, uses AI to fight deforestation. Sulab, hello, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Charlotte. Uh, it's a happy to be here. So tell us more about this uh, unique uh, solution and system you have developed with WWF. Yeah, it's quite fascinating how um, you know, AI can be used uh, uh, to solve some really complex and challenging problems uh, that we face globally. Uh, and I think this particular project uh, was uh, something that the WWF was initiating uh, and they wanted to see how they could use uh, novel data and AI to solve uh, 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 or to rather predict deforestation six months uh, before uh, it happened, right? Now that's like, you know, quite like, you know, unique how data can be used there. And then Deloitte got involved in an, and uh, um, a team based out of our offices in Netherlands uh, started developing uh, uh, this uh, solution in close collaboration uh, with WWF, uh, certain academic institutions and, uh, 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 and AWS um, as the cloud provider. Uh, and really, uh, uh, this is like, you know, so fascinating because uh, what uh, we were able to do uh, in this project was at scale, uh, um, was utilize satellite imageries uh, with um, other geospatial data, such as like, you know, how far is a river uh, from this forest, how far is uh, population, what kind of like, you know, population it is. it is, is it a big city, small city, rural, to then predict the likelihood and based on obviously like patterns of change in the canopy, um, uh, uh, to be able to predict like, you know, uh, uh, if deforestation, there's a probability of a deforestation happening in that, uh, in that area. Um, and that was, that's, that's, that was quite like, you know, fascinating and um, uh, the project is uh, right now um, um, uh, phase one. Obviously, there's there's more developments that can happen, uh, but uh, the pandemic has slowed everything down. Sula, what's interesting about this project is the fact that you could apply it to other data points and you could uh, apply it to different situations as well. Yeah, um, and I think um, I've been working in uh, this area um, 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 of using computer vision and uh, other kind of like, you know, technologies and data to uh, spot uh, uh, changes, uh, geospatial changes. And for example, you could use the same system to look at uh, um, how the coastline is changing, to think about hurricanes. Uh, you could use the same, uh, same uh, system to actually start looking at uh, wildfires. We know that wildfires are uh, sort of like, you know, they're um, happening at a, at, a, at, a, at a faster rate. Um, and, and you could also use different types of data sources. So for example, uh, in this case, satellite uh, imagery, were, uh, imagery was used, but you can also use uh, imagery from camera, airborne cameras, like you know, an, uh, oblique imagery from airplanes. You can also use LIDAR. It's quite interesting. I've done some work with LIDAR. LIDAR was not used in this project, but we've, we've done some interesting work with LIDAR where uh, you could triangulate using LIDAR wherever satellite imagery is, is poor because of cloud cover. Uh, you can triangulate using other information sources such as LIDAR or oblique imagery to get a better view. Um, and uh, not only that, um, we uh, in the Deloitte AI Institute currently in the UK, uh, we are exploring uh, with certain uh, uh, researchers uh, in academic institutions how actually sound could be used, uh, 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 capturing sound could be used to understand changes in biodiversity in, in the forest, which actually, if you, if you, if you think about it, uh, deforestation and changes in uh, um, changes in, in in the canopy, if that also starts changing uh, uh, ge general patterns of biodiversity, then we've got a bigger problem on, um, at hand. Now, the project you have developed uh, and the ones you could develop in the future sound great, but I have questions related to the uh, sustainability 
uh, of these projects and their impact on the on the environment themselves because you're talking about using AI on, on the grand you know on the large scale uh, and a lot of, of data processing and that means lots of data centers and energy so how can we use AI and uh, data um, analytics without damaging the environment too much so I think I think this is I think this is a really good question um, and uh, like you say it's absolutely true that the, the energy consumption uh, by data centers currently um, globally is actually higher than some uh, large developed nations. And, um, and, and therefore the research um, that's, that's going on currently in AI is towards how do you make machine learning more efficient? So the, the route to sustainability is really uh, you, uh, sort of like building machine learning algorithms and pipelines that uh, are uh, two things, one, are, are, are more energy efficient, i.e. they are smaller or simpler algorithms, but also where we are using pre-built uh, uh, pre large algorithms for many different activities. And that way you get economies of scale, uh, not only in compute, but also in energy efficiency. So I think we have to be very, very uh, uh, choosy, clear and deliberate in how we design these systems and how we leverage what's already existing. And how easy would it be going forward to bring um, these individual projects into broader areas of, of delivery of public goods, such as education, healthcare, or even public safety, for instance? Yeah, it's, uh, um, I think that's where it has to, has to go. When I, when I think about where AI, uh, it's not only what I think about, it's, it's, it's what generally is happening within the academic communities and the, and the various think tanks. You could think about AI in uh, um, like you know immediately in two things. One, how do you deliver public goods uh, in a more equitable, equitable way, uh, and that's basically like you know education, uh, and that's basically uh, like even legal services and health. So you you basically ask the question on uh, on 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 for example health, right? So um, AI can be used to do bet to, to do better and quicker diagnosis. It can be used. In fact, right now it's being used. Uh, within the within the pandemic, right? To to figure out um, um, how the pandemic is uh, uh, um, going and where it's distributing and where do we need uh, quicker interventions? Um, obviously, in the drug discovery, I uh, at the Deloitte AI Institute uh, this year we've been we've been collaborating with uh, actually a biotechnology upcoming biotechnology startup that is in uh, that's basically like you know researching on novel cancer treatments, and we are using AI there to uh, to help them. Uh, with their uh, sort of like you know, research agenda so that they can uh, get get the right uh, uh, drugs to the market quicker. So AI, um, like in the health, this is about like, you know, really how do you quicken the pace of research? Plus how do you really f uh, figure out where do you need interventions? But there are other things also like um, I think, um, I'm, I'm quite a, like, you know, I'm very um, passionate about education because I remember a time when I was in school uh, and I had no clue that I'll become a data scientist. In many of my math classes, I used to sort of like, you know, I used to, I used to get scared because, and there are many concepts from then that I could not understand. It was, be it was because, you know, education was, taught, in my time, education was, uh, you were taught in class as if uh, one side fits all. And there are certain concepts that I now, like, you know, when I, when I think about math and when I think about those concepts, I say, wow, what a concept. And it's a pity that I didn't understand in class at that time, like, you know. So uh, one of the things that I'm really passionate about is how do you utilize AI to develop more, let's call it student-centric, individual-centric um, education plans. And, and, and that basically and distributed equitably, uh, not only in terms of like, you know, uh, um, 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 uh, the, 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 the personalization of education, but also the scale at which you can deliver it to far-flung areas also. Yeah, there are so many potential applications, of course. Where do you think we sit uh, currently with, with AI or where do we stand? Um, have we reached the age of, of with, of living with AI? Are we there yet? Uh, and what's next? Yeah, uh, this, is a, this is a question that, you know, uh, we ponder on many uh, and then you know, that comes up in many discussions. So the way I basically like, you know, the way the litmus test really is, um, I don't know if you drove into your office today, Charlotte, but uh, if you did, you probably used your GPS. Uh, if you did, you probably have, and you probably were like, you know, 
um, um, uh, uh, you probably are using a calendar scheduler. You're probably using so many things, so many, so many apps that already are managing our lives using AI. So AI is obviously in there. It's just that um, uh, we don't register it because a lot of the AI is sort of like helping us in the back end uh, through our apps and through our through our like you know our financial services providers or or whatever. Um, and and therefore, definitely, we are living with AI. But what gets registered um, is the AI that's in the front end, such as the project that we talked about, right? Because these are media-worthy sort of moments. But there's definitely a lot of AI, and we're living with AI across the board. Well, thank you very much. Uh, fascinating discussion. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Charlotte. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Stay tuned for more from AI for Good all year, always online. <laughs>